Hello there guys, uh, I hope everyone's uh, managing during the current uh, crisis. Uh, I've still been a little quiet, I still have a little bit of a cough, so I'm just uh, working towards the end of that, but I will be uploading more content, um, and I'm still going to aim for you know one or more um, most days. Um, <clears throat> so yesterday I was reading uh, a study on the paternity of a group called Cape Coloreds, uh, Cape Coloreds are a very interesting people group. They have uh, three roots. They have a root in um, the uh, the slaves that were brought from uh, South and Southeast Asia by the Dutch from uh, India and from uh, from the Dutch holdings in uh, Malaysia, chiefly, and. Uh, as, long as, as well as that route, they have roots with the original Khoisan people, uh, the people who inhabited the Cape before the Dutch arrived. And then um, <clears throat> they also have uh, a strong uh, uh, route in the, in the whites and the European settlers. Um, so <clears throat> the, uh, the white component is mostly paternal, whereas the other components are a mixture of uh, paternities and maternities. The um, yeah, so I'm going to go through the paternity a little bit today. So, so I've compiled some uh, pie charts, and um, yeah, I just wanted to. We'll first look at the uh, white South Africans, uh, and as you'll see, they're very uh, similar to other Northwestern Europeans. In fact, the breakdown of paternities is almost identical to those of the East. Uh, of England, the uh, Netherlands, and the west of Germany. <clears throat> so as you can see here, the, uh, the Indo-European uh, paternities, the R1B and R1A, make up 73% uh, uh, of paternities, so that's just under um, three quarters. And uh, <clears throat> you see I also makes up another 14%. And that will be I2, A2, A and I1. There's no more Germanic groups, proto-European groups. And then you can see the Neolithic paternities <coughs> uh, that are present throughout uh, the north of Europe, but that are more prevalent in the south. They make up 10%, so that's J at 3%, G at 4%, and uh, <coughs> the uh, European branch of E at 3%. Uh, you can also see here there are a couple of outliers, which again are probably through Germanic. Uh, there's an incidence of N, what I presume is N, KMN, <coughs> and um, what's probably Q, 1%. <coughs> there was also one one um, of the number in the sample, one of seven, uh, 97, that had a sub-Saharan Afri uh, sub African group. That's uh, the other clade of E you see here. Um, <coughs> so, that's what uh, the paternity of white South Africans look like. Now we're going to compare that uh, so that you can see uh, what the percentage uh, of the European component and various other components is in, in various groups of the colors. So three different groups we'll cover. The first group is a generalized uh, group of Cape Coloreds, and um, the second group is the Cape Malay, who are a group that retained their uh, Islamic religion and strong and unique ethnic identity. You'll see that represented in the next chart. Uh, the final group will be Jobo Khalids, who are Khalids that travelled inland, um, and so they have a slightly different breakdown. You'll see that as well. So, first, let's look at the Cape Khalid paternity. So, uh, as you can see on this chart, uh, the a large group of their paternity, over a quarter, is of E. Uh, just a quarter, a quarter of the African E. 2% of that is the, the Neolithic European uh, clades, Neolithic West Asian. So, <coughs> then we move on to the Indo-European lineages uh, of the Europeans. So, they make up another, they make up just under a uh, quarter. You can see they're chiefly R1B, but also R1A, as with all uh, West Germanic, similar to the, the pattern I've already showed you in White South Africans. Then 
you have a good chunk of Fg. Now some of this, a little of this might be Neolithic G, uh, as we saw in the other diagram, but uh, most of this is probably South Asian F. Uh, I'm thinking from uh, Sri Lanka, because the Dutch brought slaves both from Sri Lanka and from, from Malaysia, which you'll see more in the Malay. Uh, so then you, uh, then we have O. Now O is, o is a group that dominates in China. Uh, but it's present in Western in Southeast Asia. As you can see here, 13% of the paternity is of O. Uh, and um, then if you look at... Uh, well, then we move on to, to other clades like I, J, H. So uh, J probably has multiple sources, both Neolithic European uh, sources and um, also those in, in South Asia whether from Islamic influence in the Malay or whether from uh, the South Asian uh, Indus civilization. From Sri Lanka <coughs> and uh, from, from the Indian subcontinent. Uh, and yes, then H as well. H is the main Dravidian paternity. So obviously the South Asian influence there. That will be from the Indian subcontinent. Then they have some A. Uh, A is the original paternity of South Africa. It's the patern main paternity of the Khoisan. So uh, those are those were the natives before before the Bantu, uh, or the Europeans, or the Asians were were in in the area. Uh, B, again, B is African. B is a group that's mainly carried in all of the uh, the Bantu, <coughs> and um, so that will be from from that side of things. And then you can see they have a small amount of C, which again is Southeast Asian. So that's from the Malay side and KMN, which uh, could be N from, it's, it's only 2%, it could be N from uh, Germanic outliers, but it could also be uh, root, rooty, rooty K, Southeast Asia. Okay, so moving on <clears throat> to the Cape Malay. Now here you can see there's a very different pattern in the Cape Malay. Um, this KMN, again, this, uh, very little of this will be from outliers, if anything. So, then this is root CK uh, or M from Southeast Asia, and uh, that's at fifteen percent. O again is at thirteen percent. So both of those are South Asian. L is South Asian. L is a group that's dominant in the Indus uh, River uh, Basin and certain parts of East Africa. But yeah, that's probably from from the Indian subcontinent. Uh, FG again FG. FG was proto elamic G. There will be probably be a little bit of uh, Neolithic European there, but F, F will be uh, likely from the Indian subcontinent. Uh, again, the H, the little outliers of H, 2%, that will be um, uh, Dravidian or similar from, from early in Indians from elsewhere in the Indian subcontinent. Uh, J at 11% can again be from Indus populations or from the Islamic influence on the Malay, which it's likely here as we're looking at the Cape Malay. Um, I two percent, very small amount of I, but you know I is I is um, over ten percent in uh, Germanics, as you've seen already. So that's represented there. Uh, R as a whole is uh, just over twenty percent, and as you can see, the R one A component is slightly higher here. So there's probably some um, South Asian. R1A uh, on top of the normal uh, Germanic component, but it's, it's certainly both. Uh, C at 9%, again, Southeast Asian clade, um, and E at 3%. And this E, all of this E is the West Asian clade, so this is all from uh, European, from Neolithic. This is not um, Sub Saharan African paternity, so they actually have no Sub Saharan Africa, the Cape. Uh, Sub-Saharan African paternity, the Cape Malay, uh, whereas the other groups uh, do, as you'll see with the last group I'm moving on to now. Uh, so this is overwhelmingly Asian, but with a good chunk of European uh, paternity in the Cape Malay. Jobo Collets. So the main thing you can see here, they've got quite a lot of paternities represented, but the main thing you can see here is that there's seemingly a much higher uh, component of R1B, uh, as opposed to the other European paternities, which are more or less the same as we found them in the other, uh, the main group of Cape Collins we looked at, as opposed to the Joburg offshoot. So, 
Uh, another thing you can spot is that um, <coughs> well, both clades of, I are, of E are quite high, the E1B1A and the E1B1B. And um, the, uh, the A is absent and the B is higher, which may suggest that they have a little more uh, Sub-Saharan, a little more uh, Bantu admixture and a little less uh, of the original capoid admixture. Again, the J component is quite high, so maybe that's from lending from the Cape Malay, given that they also have outliers of L uh, and KMN, and given that O is also 5%, O is also quite high. So the Joburg offshoot seem to have had quite a few um, Cape Coloured men, uh, uh, Malay men specifically, in their, uh, their founders. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I will pull up more data. I'll do I'll do a video on the capoid race at some point, and I will do probably do more videos about uh, um, Cape Coloured ethnogenesis and about the relationship between the Cape Coloureds and the Afrikaners at some point. But I hope you've enjoyed. And again, keep giving me recommendations. I've got a long list of things to get to, but I'm just getting to things as and when I feel like uh, like I should. I haven't got a um, a rigid plan at the moment for what I'm getting to next, so do shout and I'll see uh, see when I can get to your, your video. Thank you. Ta-ra.